Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at subunit 5.9, which is called pre-equilibrium approximation. Some textbooks call it a steady state approximation, so they're, they mean the same thing. So let's get started. Okay, so just to review from the last subunit, 5.8, this should look very similar. We were given reaction mechanisms that will typically have two or more elementary steps. Uh, one of the things that is very often asked of you is to come up with the overall balanced reaction and typically to determine the rate law. Now, what's presented in front of you probably looks similar, but there's an important difference. All of the examples that we did in the last subunit, the slow or what we call the rate determining step was always the first elementary step. And you can see that in this example in front of you, that is not the case. And you might say, does that even make a difference? And yes, it does. Not only do I see that the slow step is not first, but that first step that is, it says that it is fast very often you'll see the word equilibrium there, and I can also see that in that first elementary step, there is a double-headed arrow right there. That also indicates that this reaction is at equilibrium. I realize we haven't gotten to that unit yet, but equilibrium just means that the reaction is going in the forward and reverse direction. That's really not gonna affect how we handle this problem. But there's two different rate constants, K1 and K2. If you'll notice what we're asked to do here, it says determine the overall balanced reaction. That does not make a difference whether the slow step is first, second, third, that doesn't matter. The overall balanced reaction, that method of determining that is the same as we've been doing. Determining the rate law, however, is different. I'm going to show you a method I call the box out method. And it was shown to me. I think it's a really helpful method. But let me just make sure this is clear. You only have to use this method if the slow step is not first. So let me show you what I'm going to do. If the slow step is not first, like in this example, what I do is I draw a box around the reactants of that slow step and anything above it. So let me show you. I'm going to draw a shaded box around the reactants of the slow step and anything above it, meaning any elementary step in its entirety I'm going to include in that shaded box. Okay, now what? Well, now that I've boxed out what I want, I'm going to look in that shaded region and see, is there anything that I can cancel out? And I can see that there is. NOBR2 is an intermediate. It's found on the product side of the first elementary step, the reactant side of the next one. I can cancel it out. To determine the rate law in this situation, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write rate equals K prime. It's not just, I'm not going to write just K. I'm writing K prime to make sure that I let the graders know that I understand that the rate constant in my rate law is not K1. It's not K2. It's a new rate constant that I'm getting from both elementary steps. But then I'm going to write it kind of like we have in the past. I'm going to look at this shaded region and I'm going to write the rate law based on what remains. For example, nitrogen monoxide in that shaded region, I can see that there's two of them. So I'm going to give an exponent or a power of two, whereas the bromine there's just one, so I'm going to leave that with an exponent of a one. So I have written the rate law based on that shaded box region, whatever was left after I canceled out anything that I could. 
Okay, but let me just make sure this is clear. You only have to use this box out method if the slow step is not first. If it's first, you can just use our, our regular way that we did in the past. Last thing I want to do here is determine the overall balanced reaction. As I said, that's no different whether the slow step is first, second, third, doesn't matter. So I've canceled out that intermediate. So here is my overall balanced reaction plus Br2. N -O -B -R. Okay, so that's no different, but this box out method I think is really helpful when the slow step is not first. So let's just look at another example. Okay, right away I can see in this reaction mechanism that the slow step is not first, and that should send up a little flag in your brain. Mm, I should probably try that that box out method. So I'm gonna shade in, again, let's make sure we know what to shade in. The reactants of the slow step and anything above it, the entire elementary step above it, reactants, products, everything. Within that shaded region, is there anything that I can cancel out? And yes, I see that there is something that we can cancel out. Okay, there's an intermediate. And so we're going to write the rate law based on everything that remains. Okay, so I would write rate equals K prime. I can see that ozone, that O3, there's two of them. Now there's a, something in this example, though, that's a little different. Let me show you. Okay, so right here, that should not be a surprise to you. There's two ozone molecules on the reactant side, so it gets a power of two. However, what is going on here? We typically don't have things in the denominator in our rate laws. But the reason for that, guys, is because we typically, whoops, don't have products included in our rate law. That's a little bit unusual, but it wasn't canceled out, so it needs to be included. And if there is a product left in your shaded region, it ends up in the denominator of a rate law. Okay, so that's, that's unusual. That does not come up very often on the AP exam, but it's possible that you could see it. But I want you also to think about what it means for something to be in the denominator of a rate law. That means if you were to increase the molarity of that O2 gas, that would actually cause the rate, the overall speed of this entire reaction to slow down. It would cause the rate to decrease. And if we were in a biology class, like AP biology, um, or college level biology, that would likely be called an inhibitor, something that when you increase it, it causes the reaction to slow down. It's kind of the opposite of a catalyst. So I just wanted you all to be aware that that does exist, however, pretty rare to be seen on the AP exam. So um, that, again, was something called pre-equilibrium approximation, or again, some textbooks call it steady state approximation. Just to recap, you only need to use that box out method if the slow step is not first. Okay, so I hope you guys have learned a little something today, and I look forward to seeing you next time.